The Four Nights of the Apocalypse anime trailer came out today, and life is good. The curse has finally been broken over Seven Deadly Sins anime, not having a proper adaptation ever since 2018 or 2019 from the third and fourth season, and even Grudge of Edinburgh to an extent since it was not too great 3D CGI. But either way, the curse has been lifted for Seven Deadly Sins. Seven Deadly Frames is officially dead. And now, Four Nights of the Apocalypse has seemingly have a really well done anime adaptation. There is a lot going for this, the studio seems to really care, and this trailer, this full trailer, looks great. It looks beautiful, the music seems great, the voice acting feels on point, and the motion for a lot of the instances within this trailer just feels just great. It feels like it nails the tone of the series, at least from the very start. And I'm just all but excited to get into this. I'm going to be going through each and every scene and tell you guys what characters are in it, what arc I think this is going to be from, and perhaps what episode this might end up being, at least for the first core, because everything we see in this trailer is most likely going to be in the first core. And season one of Four Nights of the Apocalypse is 24 episodes and is a consecutive two core series. So we're going to get at least, we're going to get 24 straight episodes of this series. So I'm very excited for it. I might do a video at some point after the season starts or right before on how many chapters get adapted per episode and where the season will end off. I haven't committed to that just yet as I have some time to really try and figure it out. But I'm going to be giving you guys my thoughts on the trailer, the character designs, who these characters are, as well as the arc names, what episodes I think certain scenes are going to be placed in. And I'm going to be as spoiler free as I possibly can. The only spoiler thing will be characters' names and the names of arcs and where I think these particular moments are going to take place in the anime. This is all taking place from the first core, from this first trailer. So don't worry, nothing too major will be in it for anime onlys to be spoiled from. Now with that out of the way, let's hit the intro and get right into the video. The first scene of this trailer showcases us, Ironside, one of the antagonists of the series, and we meet them in chapter 1, as he is very closely related to the inciting incident of how the main character goes off on their journey. And in the next scene, we also see the Black Knight known as Pelgard walking down some stairs, which I can only assume is from Camelot. And this scene is most likely from chapter 5, or most likely chapter 6 which would most likely end up being episode, I believe, 3 or 4 at the very latest. The Ironside one could be either episode 1 or somewhere down the line in episode 6 as well. Same with Pelgard in the scene where he goes down the stairs, as this is where they will most likely have their first interaction in this series. We then cut to an image of Percival, the main character, staring off into the sunset, into the sun, as we get another close-up of Ironside underneath his mask with his eye, stating that that child is going to destroy the world, alluding to the prophecy of the Four Nights of the Apocalypse. Which, this is most likely going to be Chapter 6 as well, as that is where we're going to get that revelation about the Four Nights of the Apocalypse. We then get a brief image of God's finger as the days pass and the night comes, going back and forth through a day-night cycle, as this is where the story will begin with Percival. We also get a good image of the Four Nights of the Apocalypse based off of a prophecy. We, we get two images, one from chapter one and later on at the end of chapter five, which will be in episode one and in episode three based on my corrections. We also get another image of Percival staring off into the night sky on top of God's finger. And we get a continue on with another image of Percival as he's reacting to the idea that he has prophesied to destroy the world. And this is a moment from chapter 6, and most likely episode 3, or beginning of episode 4. And then transition into our first look at Sin, the talking animal that we see at the beginning of the series. We're going to be seeing this character most likely in episode 2, as he appeared briefly in chapter 2, and showed back up towards the end of chapter 5. So we'll be seeing him most likely in episodes 2 and 3. If my, again, if my math is correct. We then see Ironside walking in a road uh, in some sort of space where everything is twisted and rubbles everywhere. As minor spoiler here, this is actually the mention that alludes to the Knight's home base. And 
here's how good this is. Ironside is actually CG based on his movements, and it's actually almost indistinguishable from 2D by a certain distance. And you only really notice it if you look very hard and once you pause the video at a certain point. We then transition to another image of Pelgard looking down at a crystal, which is actually the end of chapter 2, and this is most likely going to be like the midway point of episode 2. Brief thing, I'm just going to say this right here, with a limited amount of screen time Pelgard is going to have in the first core and maybe in the, and in the second, he will end up being a fan favorite character, guaranteed. We then cut over to another image of Percival as he's stating that his dad, that that someone is is dead, and that he killed his grandfather, which then transitions into Ironside attacking Vargas, Percival's grandfather, as we see some brutality as he collapses onto the ground and snow begins to fall. This is all in Chapter One, as we also get to see a close-up of a crying Percival in the wake of this horrific scene. We see Percival at his grandfather's grave. As we get the words of his grandfather to tell Percival to find someone that he finds precious to him, who he can trust as they walk together in life. As we see Percival running towards the three friends he makes with Sin right behind him. This basically is towards the end of the Sistan arc and I believe chapter 21 if I am correct. I need to double check that but I believe it's at least 2021 as this is at the very end of the Sistana arc. And it's very hard to tell, but this might be episode 8. The Zana arc is very short, like 9 to 10 chapters, so that could easily fit into, th into roughly 3 to 4, as there is a good chunk of action towards the later half of it. Again, I could be proven wrong. I'm going to do the proper math when I do an actual video, breaking down each episode and how many chapters could be in each episode at a, at a later point. As we then get to hear more of the actual opening of this anime, and it sounds very upbeat, very happy-go-lucky and kind of, I'm going to say, adventurous. And that's kind of something that you get to get a feel for for the Apocalypse with, especially its first half, because it really does feel like we're going on an adventure in a land that we kind of know and understand, but also viewing it through new eyes and getting to see more of this of this uh, land in Britannia that we saw in some Dilly Sins that we never really saw before. So... Yeah, this part, we transition to the opening, and we get to see glimpses of each of the characters with their initial introductions, like Donnie, Nazi Yens, and On. Donnie's first introduction is Chapter 2, Nazi Yens is around Chapter 7, and On is Chapter 14, and that is the Sasana arc. Now, before we transition to a really cool uh, action image of Pelgar, there is a brief, like, less than a second scene a character whipping out a small dagger. Now this character, manga readers could almost immediately identify who this is, and this might actually be an anime original scene addition to the anime that we didn't actually get to see in the manga, and I believe this is in the Zastana arc, so anime fans are going to be wondering who this character is, while manga fans are going to be fanboying over this is a really cool way to tease the, uh, this upcoming character, and I cannot wait for their proper introduction. Who this character is? You might be able to guess, but I'm going to keep it ambiguous for now as it is a really cool reveal later down the line, which if all goes right, I kind of hope it is like a, a, a part of the finale of the first core, at least revealed at the beginning of the second core. We then transition into a brief scene of Pelgard twirling around his weapon as he creates his magical power, which is known as Blaze, creating a pillar and tornado of fire, and the motion that goes into this and the actual color of the flames looks really awesome and cool, feels like it's sticking out, and Pelgard, this is the first major action scene of the series that will involve Percival actually fighting. So, it's something to look forward to. And I have very confidence that this scene will actually look really great when we fully see it animated. Another brief instance of Percival lunging towards somebody. I can't tell when, this play, when that, that takes place. However, we then get a quick image of Ironside as he is unleashing a bunch of his cross-based magic attacks against somebody. Which, if I had to guess, is also the Sistana arc, which will most likely be around chapter 16, 17 which could be episode 7 or 8. Again, my math might be off, but I'd say episode 8 to be safe with that instance with Ironside. We then cut to Percival again in a small town, which should be in episode 2, the events of chapter 3 and 4, where he's actually going to be fighting Pelgard as we see his hands are glowing, 
which is when he actually starts to use his magic power. Then cut to a brief glimpse of lightning as it crashes down on the ground as we see Donnie, Nazienz, and Sin reacting to this huge lightning bolt, which that is actually the Echo Gorge arc, which if my guess is correct, this should be chapter 12 or even 11. Could end up being episode 4, the latest episode 5. We then see Donnie get hit by the, this giant wolf, which is actually events of chapter 2, which will, again, be episode 2, as it shows that he goes on to save Purcell from being attacked by this giant wolf, and we see more of Donnie, like, running around, as he says something within me started to, sm to smolder and burn again, referring to him and his dream of being a holy knight after seeing Percival in action. And him running around is actually during the Sistana arc, which is around, if I am remembering correctly, this portion is chapter, I believe, 17 or 18, so this should be around episode 8 or even 9, with this scene of Donnie running through a town. I think in a brief glimpse of Percival hugging and grasping at Nas Yen's with a serious look, as this is also during the Echo Gorge arc, and this is specifically a moment from chapter 10, one of my favorite moments of that little arc, and it's something that I really do like, and it starts to solidify these characters as a friendship as we get into the climax of that arc, and since that is chapter 10, this thing will most likely end up being about episode 5. We then cut to an image of Nazian's using his poison mixer magic, which I will not explain what it is, but that is an image in point of chapter 9, and that will again probably be episode 5, maybe even f the end of episode 4. We then transition to Percival grabbing Ahn's hand as they run away, as this is also in the middle of the Sistana arc, which is most likely chapter 15, maybe 16, which could end up being episode 7 in the anime. We then get another brief glimpse of Ironside as we see Ahn grab a sword and lunge straight towards Ironside to fight him. That fight in the anime is going to be sick. I, one of my favorite moments in the first portion of Fortnite's The Apocalypse is the Sasana arc. It is a really good arc, and I cannot wait for you guys to see it. And that should be around chapter 18, possibly even 19. So that could be episode 9, if I'm thinking correctly. We get another instance of Percival with a knapsack, and then get an, a quick instance of Percival unleashing his magical power as it begins to surround him which, based on scenery, is the Echo Gorge arc, which should probably be around episode 5 or 6, and it'll be right before he uses his power in a really cool way. We then transition to a nice image of Sin smiling at Percival, like he's very proud, and then another instance of Percival with his magical power surrounding him and in making his cloak bring like uh, expand out, as he's, we see him, Donnie, On, and Nazienz holding on to him, with through his magic power as he begins to fly through the sky as we then get the title sequence of Four Nights of the Apocalypse. The final section is around chapter 21, which is a very important chapter and will most likely be episode 10 of the anime, as it is in wake of a very important fight. However, that's not the end of the trailer just yet, as we get a brief instance of someone saying, if you think you can destroy Arthur Pendragon, you are more than welcome to try as we go from a dark space, zooming into a castle, as we get an image of King Arthur, the King of Camelot, and the King of Chaos. Who, yes, is the main villain of Four Nights of the Apocalypse. And that's the whole trailer. Honestly, that's everything I could really say about it. I didn't really spoil anything. I gave you guys the basic amount of information. And based off this trailer, again, this is definitely the very first core of the anime. Arthur's first introduction is actually chapter 22, so I say this is episode 11 of the first score. Again, this is all subjective to change to see how many chapters are in each single episode and how quickly we go through with the pacing, especially when it comes to the action scenes and how quick the story progresses. But after going through the scene by scene with you guys, my overall opinion of the anime's uh, trailer remains the same. It looks great. Art style is consistent. The colorings are great. The animations that we've seen look really cool and fluid. The way the magic is actually used, the magical attacks and the aura looks very vibrant and shining like it's something out of a storybook. I am all but excited. The voice actors are also something that I am 
very happy with so far, but I gotta hear them in the actual show with the very iconic moments and scenes. And also, the fact that we're not getting any censorship, it is confirmed for this anime, really makes me believe that we're gonna get full four nights, because things can get brutal and get dark for the series, but there's also a ray of hope in this whole entire series. There is other stuff I could talk about with four nights, but I might save that for another video. Either way, this was my breakdown scene by scene of the trailer, what chapters these scenes pertain to, what episodes they could be in the show, the characters, as well as my thoughts on the visuals that are presented. Really simply, the curse of Seven Deadly Sins' poor anime adaptations has been lifted with Four Nights the Apocalypse, and something I got from a very, very uh, resourceful source on Twitter is that the team behind this anime are actually very excited and passionate about this project, so we can at least guarantee that it'll look good throughout, and that the important moments will actually be given due justice and I cannot wait. But what did you guys think of this trailer? Did you like it? Did you hate it? Are you excited for Four Nights of the Apocalypse to be having a good anime adaptation? Do you think it'll be a dark horse of the fall 2023 season? Or do you think it'll be overshadowed by all the other anime coming out? Are you going to be sharing this with other people? And do you think people will actually be able to give this series a, sh a shot despite the poor showings of the last two seasons of Seven Deadly Sins? Leave your thoughts and opinions in the comment section down below, and if you haven't already, like and subscribe and hit the notification bell for updates on future videos. It really helps and ensures you guys enjoy the content I make on this channel. I cover the Fortnite's The Apocalypse manga on a weekly basis, but now with the anime coming out, I am most likely going to try and cover the anime on a weekly basis for anime-only watchers, as I do want to share my experience with the anime as it comes out, and also see how anime-onlys react to the anime and manga fans reacting to this adaptation of a series that we all love. But with all that said and done, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I hope you all have an awesome day.